Mic test, mic test, testing, testing. Mic test from the paddock. There they go. Field of four. Two-year-old Philly sent on the way in the BC Cup. Debbie Dunn. Donna win at the break. Catches a flyer and opens up two and a half lengths. 
It is Lizzie's rein in second on the outside. Back burner is third. And about four lengths back, weekend in Del Mar. As they go to the clubhouse turn, Donna Wynn shows the way. Donna Wynn leads it now by just under two. Lizzie's rein, second by a length and a half. Back burners on the outside third, and weekend in Del Mar is the trailer, but only four off the lead. Opening quarter in 22 and two. As they march down the back stretch, it is Donna Wynn with the lead of a length and a half. Lizzie's rein sits chilly in second. Weekend in Del Mar third, and now four back to back burner. Past the 5 16 they go, the half 46 flat. And Donna Wynn confronted by Lizzie's rein. Weekend in Del Mar now only a length back in third. They're midway on the final turn. And it is Donna Wynn, Lizzie's rein. Weekend in Del Mar, any one of these three. As they turn for home, Lizzie's rein has the lead. And down the lane they come. Lizzie's rein leads it now by a length and a half. Donna Wynn second, weekend in Del Mar third. Lizzie's rein strides clear by four. BC Cup debutante to Lizzie's rein. Weekend in Del Mar second, Donna Wynn third, back burner fourth. There they go. Field of three, older Phillies and Mayor sent on the way in the BC Cup to stop. Bayakoa's image from the outside, quick at the break, takes a half length lead. Infinite patience, not giving up the rail. And two and a half lengths back now is the trailer. We be three. They're on the turn. Bayakoa's image on the outside pops ahead in front. Infinite patience at the rail. Then three back to We be three. As they sweep by us now, the opening quarter, a solid 23 and two. And Bayakoa's image on the outside by a neck. Infinite patience at the rail. Second by two and a half. Weeby three sits in third as they go to the clubhouse turn. Bayakoa's image is now cleared off. Leads it by a length and a half. Infinite patience second by two. And Weeby three is the trailer, but she's only three and a half from the lead. As they run past the half mile marker, the half went up in 46 and one. Sprint time as they head down the back stretch. Bayakoa's image by a head, shifting to the outside is Infinite Patience. We be three, now's only a length back in third. As they run to the 5 16 marker, it's Infinite Patience. We be three, now taking a shot at her on the outside. Bayakoa's image is third. Quarter mile from home, six furlongs, 111 and two. And We be three on the outside. Infinite Patience at the rail. It's five back to Bayakoa's image. Eighth of a mile to go in the BC Cup this staff. Infinite Patience pestered on the outside by Weeby Three. Weeby Three, Infinite Patience. Infinite Patience on the inside. Weeby Three is game on the outside. As they hit the wire, it will be Infinite Patience to win it by a long neck. Weeby Three second, Bayakoa's image third. Six in, they're at the post. There they go. Field is six sent on their way in the mile and three-eighths BC Cup Marathon. 
Make it or break it in. Don with the win. Tussle for the early lead. Two and a half lengths back now is Gorky Park. Two more back is Mount Loki. Then we have Goodbye Putin and about three and a half or four to the trailer. Barney Google into the clubhouse turn they go and make it or break it. Trying to be geared down. Leads it by two. Don with the win. Second by a length and a half. It's Gorky Park in third. Also trying to be geared down. Then moving through is Goodbye Putin. We have Mount Loki and Barney Google the trailer. He's about 11 off the lead. The opening quarter in 24 and 2 as they head for the far turn. Make it or break it. Leads it now by a half. Don with the wind is up on the outside. Two lengths back is Gorky Park. Goodbye, Putin on the outside. Then it's a length and a half back to the loper, Mount Loki, and about three and a half or four to Barney Google. The half, they slowed it down, 49 and 3. As a race by us now for the final time. It is make it or break it with a three-length lead. Don with the win, second by a length and a quarter. On the inside, Gorky Park. Goodbye, Putin, Mount Loki, and Barney Google. As they go to the clubhouse turn for the final time, make it or break it. Shows the way now by two and a half. Don with the wind. Right there at the rail is Gorky Park. Goodbye, Putin's on the outside with about four lengths to make up. Mount Loki, two and a half for the back. Barney Google, six furlongs went and 116 flat. There, midway on the back stretch and make it or break it. Lead is shrunk now to a length and a quarter. Don with the win, second by a length and a half. Gorky Park, goodbye, Putin races the team. Then Barney Google and Mount Loki, they're taking closer order as they hit the far turn a quarter mile from home. The mile went up in 143 flat. Make it or break it, trying to be nursed along by Amadeo Perez. Leads it by a length and a half. Here comes goodbye Putin on the outside. Done with the wind and Gorky Park as they turn for home in the BC Cup Marathon. Make it or break it, leads it now by three. It's make it or break it, goodbye Putin, Gorky Park. Make it or break it, wins it under wraps. It'll be Gorky Park second, Barney Google third, followed by Goodbye Putin, Don with the wind. And All in, they're at the post. There they go. Field of six, three-year-old filly sent on the way to BC Cup Hong Kong Jockey Club. And it is Air Force who's quick at the break and on the early late. Lola M now moves up to engage. Three lengths back is above average. Key to success on her inside. Matsqui and four back to a Rundell Castle. They're on the turn and they're heads apart. On the inside, it is Air Force. On the outside, Lola M. Paired off, key to success and above average. Length and a half back now is Matt Squee with a Rundell Castle now five further back in sixth. Opening quarter, a lively 23 and three. As they go to the clubhouse turn, it's Air Force from the rail with the lead by a half. Up on the outside, Lola M. Key to success, ground saving trip in third. Above average in fourth, followed by Matsqui and a Rundell Castle. Past the half mile marker they go, the half 47 and four. As they head down the back stretch, Air Force now clears off by a little over a length. On the inside, key to success. On the outside, Lola M. Above average will travel three wide, followed by Matsqui and a Rundell Castle, who's now picking up the bit. Past the 516, six furlongs, 113 and four. And it is Air Force with the lead. Air Force, Lola M, above average. Key to success is still fourth, but she's got two and a half to make up. Matsqui and the trailer of Rundell Castle, eighth of a mile from home. And Air Force leads it, but they're all in pursuit. And down the lane they come. Air Force, key to success at the rail, far outside. Here comes Matsqui, but it's Air Force to capture the BC Cup Hong Kong Jockey Club.
Matt Squeeze second, Key to Success third, above average, Lola M, and Arundel Castle. There they go. Field of nine, two-year-old Colts and Gelding set on the way in the BC Cup nursery. And it's Pisco very quick at the break. August Rain drives up on the outside. Beckett's best got a good spot in third, followed by Horatio on the outside. Highliner races along in fifth. Then it's Fraser Landing sixth. At the rail is Rick Stancer, Diocles, and the trailer, Northern Ports. As they run to the half mile mark, the opening quarter, a quick 21 and two. To the back stretch they go, and it is from the rail, Pisco by ahead. August Rain second by three. Horatio sits in third by three and a half, followed by Highliner in fourth. Then we come back to Fraser landing in fifth. Length and a half back at the rail is Rick Stancer, Beckett's best. Then Diocles and the trailer, Northern Force. The half, 45 and three. Quarter mile from home. And Pisco from the rail by a nose. August Rain. Horatio is ready to pounce in third. Then three legs back. Here's Diocles closing at the rail. As they turn for home, August Rain has the lead. And down the lane they come. August Rain. Horatio on the outside. Diocles is closing ground. August Rain. Diocles. Horatio. August Rain will prevail. Diocles, a very game second. It'll be Horatio third, Pisco fourth, followed by Highliner. There they go. Smart lad on the early lead. Now Bold Arch makes his presence felt on the inside. Sir Bregovic asks for speed from the outside. Then we come back to just Jimmy. Be quick and set to shine the trailer. To the clubhouse turn they go, and it is Bold Arch with the lead. Sir Bregovic now chasing in second. It's Smart Lad getting away in third. Just Jimmy is fourth. Be quick rallies up into fifth. He's about six off the lead. Set to shine the trailer. As they turn for the back stretch, the opening quarter, 21 and two. As they head down the back stretch, Bold Arch leads it by three quarters of a length. Sir Bregovic tracks on the outside. Two and a half legs back, just Jimmy Smart Lad. Set to shine is now picking up the bit and be quick. The half, 44 and two. Quarter mile from home and it's still Bold Arch with the lead. Sir Bregovic in second. At the rail is just Jimmy third, smart lad, and set to shine. Eighth of a mile from home. They have to come and catch Bold Arch. And down the lane they come. It is Bold Arch by a length and a half. Just Jimmy is running well on the outside. Bold Arch, just Jimmy, one last surge. It will be Bold Arch. I think hangs on over just Jimmy. Set to shine will be third. Sir Bregovic, smart lad, and be quick.
There they go. Field of 10, three-year-old Colts and Gelding sent underway in the Sir Winston Churchill Derby Trial. Back to Liberty from the far outside is trying to gun for the early lead. Sunbird down towards the inside. Lucky Force right there. Then on the extreme outside, there's space down towards the inside is Wicked Knight. Two and a half lengths back is Rock Cliff. Then it's back to Tappage Choice. On the outside, Accidental Hero. Then down towards the inside, Legacy Square. And Pursue is 10th. Opening quarter in 23 and 2. Sprint time as they go under the line with one lap to go. Out in the three path, it's back to Liberty with the lead. Sunbird skims the rail. Lucky Force on the outside in third. Wicked Knights at the rail. In between them comes Space. There's a break now of three and a half to Tappage Choice. Rock Cliff pursue on the outside, followed by Accidental Hero. Shuffle back to last as Legacy Square. The half, 47 and 3, as they head down the back stretch in the Sir Winston Churchill Derby Trial. On the inside, Sunbird on the outside, back to Liberty. There goes Lucky Force. He's circling up three wide. Two and a half lengths back is Space, followed by Accidental Hero at the rail. Wicked Knight trying to pick his way through Legacy Square. Midway on the final turn, six furlongs, 112 and 4. And with one move, Sunbird has opened up by two and a half. Sunbird leads it by two and a half. It is Lucky Force in second. Trying to close up widest of all is Legacy Square. And down the lane they come. It's Sunbird with the lead. Legacy Square is closing on the outside. But Sunbird got the jump. Sunbird to win it. It'll be Legacy Square second. Accidental Hero third. Space is fourth. Followed by Lucky Force. Pursue Wicked Knight. The post. There they go. Field of eight. Older runners sent on their way in the BC Cup Classic. From the outside, soaring for the sun, is quick at the break and right on the early lead. Rookie year gets away in second. Three lengths back now. At the rail is at attention. A roller coaster ride, Florida Gator. Then is back to boy Tano, pay my way. A big union opening quarter is a sweep by us now for the first time 24 and 1 and rookie year from the center at the rail is soaring for the sun now Florida Gator drives up three or four wide down towards the inside at attention a roller coaster rides in between runners big unions on the outside pay my way is seven eight is Boitano into the clubhouse turn they go the half comes up 48 and 2 as they run to the half mile mark. Soaring for the sun from the rail leads it by a neck. Rookie year and Florida Gator engaging. Wrapped up at the rail is at attention, a roller coaster ride. Then on the outside, big union boy Tano and pay my way, but he's only about six off the lead. As they run to the 516th marker, they have to come and catch. Soaring for the sun. Rookie year at attention. Now trying to get out of there from the rail. Florida Gator, deep on the track now is Boy Tano. Six furlongs and 113 and one, and soaring for the sun leads it by a length and a half. At attention, trying hard in second. A roller coaster ride third, as they turn for home. Soaring for the sun, but here comes at attention on the outside. Soaring for the sun, at attention. At attention now grabs the lead. At attention to win the BC Cup Classic. Soaring for the sun second, a roller coaster ride. Pay My Way, followed by Boy Tano, Big Union, Florida Gate.
And a pleasant good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Friday night edition of Hastings Racing Live, presented by BC Racebook. Track announcer Dan Jukic being joined, as usual, by our paddock host and handicapper Mike Heads. We're going to preview all seven on this Friday night, hopefully get you headed in the right direction, coming off a nice Monday afternoon. Yeah, it was a great BC Cup day, bet almost a million, just $12,000 short of a million like it, dollars. You buck up. <laughs> yeah, a million. It was a great eight race card. Uh, it was a good day. A lot of exciting finishes. Uh, saw some real superstars run. Probably the race of the day was Infinite Patience and Weeby Three. They were running at each very other. fast, 143 yeah. and change, and then uh, they were in a dogfight from the quarter pole right to the wire. But uh, I, but uh, that, there was a lot of nice, very good races on Monday, and we'll try and. It's a tough act to follow, but we've got seven tonight, it and uh, we got no carryovers. But I'd like to uh, pass on my congratulations with we had an inquiry going in the last race and everything. Trainer Barb Heads and the Barn, three stake wins on Monday, so it was a great yeah, it was day a big for day for yeah. yeah. No, they sent out some nice horses, and uh, you know they won. You know, had attention's a cool horse. The August rain were on his guts out in oh, the two-year-old race. There and they go. Patience ran her guts out as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah, it was a real big day for the Barn. All right, let's get right into the opener. Field of five. They're going to go six and a half furlongs. They are maidens. 16,000 up to 20,000 yep. for the BC Breds. First half of the double exactor and triactor wagering. A lot of trouble this race. So he's, this horse has only had the one start so far in 2023. One start as a two year old last yeah. year. I'm going to head to the two Ebony Eyes out of the Rob Maven barn. Yeah, uh, I agree that this is a difficult race. I, I, I did take a different horse, right. but there is. There's not a whole lot to go on in here. BC Choo Choo will likely be one of the favorites. Is she beatable? Yes, yes. I, I think she is beatable. I'm going to try to beat her with a one horse, Anzac Bay. A good third behind a stable made addendum and Military Cross last year. And then this year, just an okay fourth in her first up run against Licorice, Queens over Jacks. I thought that was a far superior field. Uh, gets leading rider. A couple of works since that race. Why not try this one? And I'll try Anzac Bay to defeat BC Choo Choo. And I put Ebony Eyes in for third. I got the same three, but in a different order. The opener, Mike's heading to the one, Anzac Bay. I'm going to head to the two, Ebony Eyes. On to race two now, field of five. To go a mile and a 16th, exactor try and pick five, as Mike mentioned off the top. No carryover in the pick five. Well bet on BC Cup Day, but no carryover and paid well to over $1,000, yeah. I believe. This is for the non-placed horses of the year, but if you placed in one of those races, you're still eligible. You your no, you don't lose your eligibility. I'm going to head to the two ace deuce. Appreciates going a mile and a 16th. And who's going to the front? This horse may find the, his way on the front end. The value max probably will go. Ace Deuce won't be very far away. And uh, you're right, the pace scenario should be uh, kind, slow. And I'm, I think it's between Ace Deuce and Bodega. I went Bodega, but they're a coin toss for me. Both are, uh, there wasn't much between them in their first up when they met first time this year. Right. Uh, last time, uh, regressed. Not too many horses regressed with Amadeo. No, on, I know. The horse did move backwards. I tried to hustle him out of the gate, and I think he really appreciated that. He was just... And maybe it was just a flat day. I don't know. He just wasn't himself as he was the favorite at 6-5. to five. But uh, I, I'm 5-2, and then I put Vancouver's Hunter in for third. Uh, this horse will appreciate the mile on the 16th right. as well. So 5-2-3 uh, for me. All right. Race 2, Mike's heading to the 5, Bodega. I'm going to head to the old-timer, like me, number 2, Ace Deuce. Yep. On to the 3rd now. It's a field of 5 to go a mile and a 16th exactor try, pick 3, wagering. It is a claiming condition event, non-winners of two, I believe. Yep, the non-2-4. And going uh, long. I'm going to go to Silver Arrow. I know he's, he's he's that horse who has one win, one second, and then four thirds. 800 thirds. I know, you know. at today's uh, distance, but i got to give him one more try. Gets in light with Apprentice Fraser Abley, and uh, maybe today's the day. Yeah, it could be. Uh, I, you know, I'm not going to leave the horse out, but I, I did pick it second, but certainly wouldn't surprise me if the horse were to win. Once again, Fraser had another good week. When he went five or, or no three, maybe three in Edmonton right. or in Edmonton, uh, Winnipeg. Winnipeg, three in Winnipeg this week, and uh, still go, going strong. Uh, I went to the four. Pay, I see a lot of speed. The one, two, and or the one and three are probably going to be near the lead. I see Peace Haven getting a nice trip in behind them. His her race is going long at Golden Gate. Were quite good. She was kind of would track the pace and uh, run good races and. Uh, you know, I respect the horses, even though they're maidens down at, at Golden Gate. They're still pretty strong. So I'm going to get a peace save. I'm going to forgive her for the dreadful she first really up run. She drifted far back in that opening run, though. Yeah, no, it, did. it wasn't in the race at all. No. And uh, they didn't run particularly fast. 18 and 4 is just, it's nice time but for the caliber. But uh, she, 
she was well back and not even involved in the race. I'm sure she'll be better. That was just her first run here in Vancouver. Coming back in a quicker time frame. I'm going to give her another chance. Uh, Silver Arrow definitely and striking value for third. Four, five, three. All right, race three. Mike's heading to the four. Peace Haven. I'm going to head to the five. Silver Arrow. On to race four now. And we have drawn a scratch. Take out the one desired outcome. Field of four now to go a mile and a sixteenth. Exactor try. Pick four wagering. No show wagering on this race. That pick four guaranteed at 20K again. For me, it's going to be Crown Council. Yeah, I, we'll see how he is in the paddock, but he's, uh, I know Rob's getting the better of him in, these, in, in the paddock. He's done a lot of schooling with him. He was a good second to an Army of Light. The final time wasn't overly fast, right. but still he was second. The mile and the 16th, will it help the horse? I don't, I don't know. Uh, the one horse I think it'll help is the five, Cairo Crusader. And the four, Brian's Delight. Brian's Delight's definitely bred to get the trip. And uh, he's got to behave damn himself at the gate. Yeah, and yeah. When, when, I know. These horses have quirks there. about them, and that's yes. why they're still maidens. Right. But, uh, uh, but Brian's Delight should find his way to the front. I like, I like seeing blinkers off. Uh, that's a big scratch, the one horse desired. This horse was going to be the three to five favorite. Yes. The one horse desired outcome. So this race has be, really become wide open. And uh, I'm going to go Brian's Delight, Cairo Cruiser, and Crown Count. So I'm going to go four, five, and two. No love for anyone. Uh, these horses have all. You know, shown some ability. You know, uh, some bad but, traits too. But but yeah, they got some <laughs> bad traits. But this is not a tough race, and if it, somebody's going to break through with a win, is what right. I'm saying in this race. And even the filly, she's bourbon on ice, isn't bad. Uh, she should appreciate the distance change, uh, and uh, I know she's got to run against the boys, but. I know a, she has been. She has, boys. yeah, she has been entering, but uh, she wanted to go long, and uh, the long races were not going. Nope, and, uh, I had to wait and run against the boys, but that's okay. This race has come up pretty soft. All right, race four kicks off the 20K, guaranteed pick four. Mike's heading to the four, Brian's Delight. I'm going to head to the two, Crown Council. Out of the fifth race now, two scratches. Scratch the three, Carla's Honor. Scratch the six, a Philly Fatale. We'll see a Philly Fatale on Sunday. Six and a half furlongs, field of five. Now exactor try, superfecta, and pick three, wagering. Oh, Visenya for me. Yeah, I like Visenya because there was going to be a bit of speed in here, right. but I'm, I've got to stay with the horse. She was my second pick, but I, I'm hoping Amadeo can stay a little closer to the pace. Uh, put the one horse uh, is to be sunny in for second. Uh, this horse really, you know, uh, didn't wake up last time, but showed uh, showed me quite a bit. Like I know this horse, had, I picked her a lot, right? And it finally it changed the put it, added blinkers last time. And I know it was just a three or a very short field, but she was able to get a very easy lead, 49 flat for the half, bye bye, and then sprinted home. But uh, it's not going to be much faster than that in here, so I got to give her respect. And I put the seven Rosa Texas in. She was involved in a pretty hot pace duel last time, and with the speed virtually scratching Carlos right. Honor and Philly Fatale, uh, she her chances have just been enhanced. So I put the seven horse in as well. But I I agree to er, Visenya over to be sunny for me. Four one seven. All right, race five. We agree on the four Visenya. Moving on to the six now. Field of eight and a toughie. They're going to go six and a half furlongs. Late double exactor try. Twenty cents superfecta wagering. Like the the opener, I had a lot of trouble not because of lack of uh, uh, form, but just how it's all going to shape up here. Eric Harris riding a two race win streak. But she is moving up in class. Yeah. Is there some speed to bother her? I'm not sure. Blasting light, but yeah. there, it's not often you get a feel with so many horses that are sharp and on their game. Exactly. It's hard to draw a line through some of these. And the ones that have been running kind of mid pack, they've been running against better horses, and they're dropping down in class. I mean, the ones dropping down are, are, are Icebreaker and Bellaru. Those horses are running in far superior races. The one dropping down in Price is Amanda, but she wasn't running it. Those are non three. Those are non three. So this is kind of a sideways move uh, for Amanda. But uh, all three horses are eligible in here. I went lasting light, I, uh, pure right. guess. Uh, I, I respect this horse, been running in some tough races. Uh, you know, she too, like Bellaru and, and Icebreaker, are coming out of dirty, tough races. And there is Ari Cara to deal with, that is the issue. Right. But she can put that one. When Ari Cara generally gets breathed on, she's not, not, not usually that resilient, but she looked very good in winning last time, but that was for 4,000. But this race is featuring some $10,000 horses in for 62.50. This is this race has come it's up tough. a lot it is for tough. Ari Cara. So uh, I went lasting light. I put uh, Icebreaker on the class drop. Should get a good trip in behind the speed. But right. once again, she's another one that does better going long. Right. But uh, she's in sprinting. And uh, Ari Cura, I, I can't leave her out. But Anami, Sharp, Zeta Marie, uh, running in second. Zeta Marie, she's... Bellaru yeah. is, is with Amadeo, I've left off. I mean, it's... And Amanda, I've left out. Yeah. These are all capable horses that are 
you know, just whoever does get a little bit better trip might win the money. So what you're saying is take a few if you're I, in your pick I fours. Have, I'm taking a shot on Lasting Light, but I'm not keying her. But, yeah, it's a, it's a good race. It's a, like they're all in good form, and the ones that aren't winning are dropping. So right. it uh, makes it a very difficult handicapping assignment. All right, race six. Mike's heading to the eight, Lasting Light. I'm going to head to the seven, Amanda. On to the seventh and final event, scratch the six, Addendum. They're going to go six and a half for Longsfield, a six now, Exactor Tri, Superfecta, Super High Five Wagering. Well, I see Licorice going to the front, possibly uh, I'm all shook up out there chasing away and a Lober from the outside, but I don't really see a closer. I'm, yeah, I don't see a, a, much going on for uh, maybe Chi Chi's song. That's my third horse. Right. If there is a Come, closer, it might be Chi Chi's song. Score. Yes, against, you know, uh, soft maidens. Uh, but I agree, there's not really a, a valid closer in the race. That's why I did have a dandem on top. I thought this horse would have been, maybe had a good shot. Uh, you know, I had her in for second, but obviously with the scratch. Uh, uh, I, I like the one I'm all shook up. Amadeo Perez rides. Uh, if, it doesn't, if she doesn't get the lead, uh, I think she could be laying second or third in a good spot behind the leader. So she's going to get a good trip, and that's why I took Chased the one. Chased the candy last time. Yeah. And that race was, was good. You know, they went pretty fast, 117 flat. Yeah. This is an easier race for I'm All Shook Up. But the four-horse Licorice uh, broke her maiden and then uh, came back in a tough non-two going long. Uh, or it wasn't even a non-two. It was just an open a stake book allowance at above average one. But uh, that was a tough assignment for her. She led the field a long ways before getting exhausted in the final 16th. But uh, she's back in sprinting and gets in light with apprentice Fraser Abley. And uh, as I mentioned, Chi Chi's song I threw in for third. I went one, four, and five. I went four, one, and five. So in the nightcap, Mike said into the one, I'm all shook up. And if he went, if, if she wins, yes. I want you to do I'm your all best shook up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Coming to the wire. You can do your best little Elvis. I'm going to head to the jingle. four, Licorice. Well, that wraps up the Friday night edition of Hastings Racing Live, presented by BC Racebook. No live racing tomorrow, but we do have live racing on Sunday. Seven yep. races. Seven races on Sunday, uh, starting at 2 o'clock. Uh, should be a great day. It can be warm. It is. As they say, it's going to be hot. <laughs> it's going to be a little on the warmer side. We'll have some shortened down post parades on Sunday, but uh, seven good races, and we'll see if we'll have any carryovers, carryovers for you. We could have because some of these we races, these, some of these races are They're difficult tough. tonight. And we're going to have hot dogs here on oh, uh, cool. Sunday. We got the corgis. <laughs> the corgis are out here racing. There'll be five heats corgis. and a final. Yep, so. there'll be a lot of fun in between races. It's always popular the corgis. All right, as we leave you, here's a com speed. <laughs> complete look at our selections for tonight's card. Till Sunday. Good luck, everyone. Have a good day.
And a pleasant good evening, everyone, and welcome to Hastings. Track condition at present, listed as track pass. Special welcome to everyone joining us for our Friday night card. Now please turn to your official programs for this evening's corrections and changes. Race one has a clean board. Race two, no changes. It does kick off the $1 pick five, and there is no carryover. Race three, also no changes. In the fourth, this race kicks off our guaranteed $20,000 pick four, scratch the one, desired outcome. Number two, Crown Council, three over. Number four, Brian's Delight, three pounds over. There is no show wagering on the fourth. In the fifth, scratch number three, Carla's Honor, scratch number six, Billy Fatal. Race six is a clean board. Then the seventh. Number one, I'm all shook up, one pound over. Number two, hoax is four pounds over. The owner line on number three, no people. Please delete Robert Thacker. Number five, Chi Chi's song is two pounds over. Scratch the six, addendum. Those are all the changes and corrections to the present time. At this time, just a reminder, please make your wagers as early as possible. At this time, Hastings would like to welcome our following groups joining us tonight. The Norton Rose Fulbright Work Social. Raymond James Business Summer Outing. The Arbutus Club, 25-year club members. The Whitecaps Sales Team. Blake, Castles, and Graydon. LLP, the Tagetta Media Incorporated, and a special welcome to the Whiskey Smoke event. Don't forget, live racing continues on Sunday. Sunday, of course, is Corgi Day. There will be five heats and a final on Sunday. Come and see who the top dog is with the dog days of summer. Also on hand with us tonight, the Greater Vancouver Food Bank. They are selling 50-50 tickets. Watch for the volunteers or stop by the tent just outside the winner's enclosure. Thank you for your attention and good luck.
it a pleasant good evening and welcome to Hastings Racecourse on a slightly, uh, it's beautiful out, but it's got a little high cloud kicking about. 24 degrees, a little bit of a breeze keeping the temp down. It's ideal conditions for a, an evening card. We got seven thrillers for you tonight. I'm your Patacoast Mike Heads, and I'll be trying to give you as much information as I can about all of the horses participating tonight. And without confusing you, try and get you uh, headed up to the windows with some winning decisions. Fast racing strip, as you would expect. And we've got five $16,000 filly and mare maidens. They've all not won a race in their careers yet, but someone's going to break through. They're going to go with six and a half furlongs. Here's my top pick. This is the one Anzac Bay. I thought a really good third to close out last season. And the only question marks surrounding the filly are th her lack of racing activity. That's you know, one thing to get a two-year-old started in the fall, and that's great. So you, you get them rolling to come out in the spring, and the filly did, did but uh, did not start. And it took her a while. But she has some really nice works heading into her first start back on July the 8th, which is five weeks ago now. She got beat eight lengths in that Licorice Queens over Jack's race. Was, was pretty much last early and kind of stayed there, did pass one horse. But it was just her first race in, what is that, seven, uh, like nine months. So uh, uh, I'm sure she'll be a lot better today. She's had a couple of good half-mile drills or nice easy breezes uh, in preparation for this race for owner Wayne Oliver and trainer Tara Nigel. I've got a side with her. Leading rider has been attracted to the saddle, and uh, he's batting about 38%. Currently 8 to 5 second choice. That's the one Anzac Bay. Hopefully she shows a little more speed than she did in her first up run. But there is speed in here with BC Choo Choo and Ms. Stanford. They should be, uh, I'm not going to say ding dong and up front, but uh, there should be an honest pace being set. So if Anzac Bay can maybe lay in third. Uh, got a good shot of winning the money on the class drop. This is a lot easier test for her. She's been running for maiden allowance. First time in for a price. There's the one, Anzac Bay. Just ahead of her is the two. That is Ebony Eyes. She too started in the fall. Kind of her four mirrors, the one horse. Had a start in the fall. It was in the Sadie Diamond Futurity. There on October the 1st, was given the rest of the year off. Came back uh, quite late, just a couple of weeks ago, to run in a maiden allowance. Uh, there was an optional claiming price of 50000 She was in for the 50, or in for the 45 with, with uh, Leary Seach around aboard. That was a very fast heat that was won by a, a very nice three-year-old called Space. And you're going to hear lots of good things about Space going forward. Uh, but uh, Ebony Eyes was uh, a back marker in that race. But this is a lot easier competition. Gets in against the girls. She was in against the boys in her first up run. Chris Mamdeen hasn't had that many mounts. He's been hurt this year. and uh, But he's been riding well. He's batting at 20%. Philly looks great here in the paddock. 7-2 to two is a nice price on her for the daughter of McLean's music. The Maben's own Ebony Eyes, and of course Rob Trains. Definitely a good chance for the two Ebony Eyes. I've got her in for third, but could certainly see her winning. There's no surefire lock in here, so. Number three is BC Choo Choo. Good runner up to Chi Chi's song. It was a Chi Chi Choo Choo exactor last time. And uh, chased a slow pace. Didn't break great that day. Rushed up. Got the lead. Ended up getting caught by Chi Chi's song. If she runs that race back, I'm not sure she wins. That's my, a bit of my concern. She, I think she needs to move forward off of that race. So I think the one and two will be, be you know, the two class droppers will improve. And so BC Choo Choo will need to improve as well. 
She is your favorite at 7 to 5 for Dawn and Sue Daner. Nice to see them here tonight. Number four will be Ms. Stanford for Moral Common Soli. There's the owner and breeder. This one was foaled in California, mated with Stanford. The Stanfords seem to have a lot of speed. Going to remove the blinkers for the first time this year. Gets apprentice Fraser Abley. Probably going to be one of the pace setters in here. She did set a slow pace, didn't stay on. Only got beat a length and three quarters to BC Choo Choo. So they're not that far apart, the three and the four, but they're quite far apart in odds, uh, this one being at nine to one. But a blinker change, hey, that could be the difference uh, in turning the tables on BC Choo Choo. Whether it's good enough to beat the one, the two, and the five, we'll... we'll uh, We'll see. But 9-1, to one, you're getting a good... If you go head for Miss Stanford and a very hot Fraser Abley, then you're getting a good number at 9-1. to one. Number 5 will be Stilettos Only, first year for Trinity West Stables, and trainer John Snow. There's a good look at the daughter of Daddy Long Legs. Series of good works as she makes her debut tonight. 50 and 3 breezing uh, last Saturday. A couple weeks before that, six and a half furlongs out of the gate, and 123 and 1 as she takes in the crowd here around the paddock, gazing out at everything. I can tell you she's been really well paddock schooled. She's been, John sends his horses up to the paddock quite frequently in the mornings. Rich Balgobin will ride, so. So I showed some ability on June 25th with a 5 eights and 101 and 4. There's some talent here. 7 to 1 on the board. Right now the longest shot, but uh, so he set off the top. This isn't the toughest maiden 16. She can run in 118 and change. Uh, she's going to be pretty dangerous in here. Well, the first race is a bit of a puzzle for me. Uh, yeah, it's just I've gone to the one Anzac Bay over the three BC Choo Choo and the two Ebony Eyes. It did go one, three, and two. First half of your early daily double, also exacta and tractor wagering, as well as win place show. That's always available on the races, unless you got four horses, then uh, then they take that show away. Right, you got 10 minutes to post for our Friday opener. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. Hopefully you enjoy the evening's festivities and seven races tonight. Perfect evening for racing. Our second to last Friday of the year. Only one more Friday. Next Friday. That's our last Friday of the meet. Got a couple of Monday nights during the PE. Right, the horses are stepping onto the track for race number one. It's time to let the voice of the races here at Hastings, Dan Jukic, introduce the field for our Friday opener. Good luck, everyone.
Bugler John Corsrod brings the horses on the track for the opener. It's a field of five to go six and one half furlongs. First half of the daily double exactor and triactor wagering post time in seven minutes. Here's a field number one, Anzac Bay, owned by Wayne Oliver, rider Amadeo Perez. Two, Ebony Eyes, owned by Robin Sheena Maven, the rider Chris Mamdeen. Number three, BC Choo Choo, owned by Don Daynard and Sue Daynard, with Brian Boudram sing aboard. Number four, Miss Stanford, owned by Moro Comensoli, the rider's apprentice, Fraser Abley. And number five, Stilettos Only, owned by Trinity West Stables, the rider Rich Val Gobin. Six minutes to post time.
The horses are approaching the starting gate. The horse is now reaching the starting gate. And loading in for the opener, Anzac Bay to the inside gate. Next one up is BC Choo Choo. Ms. Stanford, gate four. Outside gate is Stilettos only. Last one up will be Ebony Eyes. Ebony Eyes goes in, five in. They're at the post. There they go. Ms. Stanford quick at the break and right on the early lead. Ebony Ice trying to move in at the rail is Anzac Bay as they pass by us now. It's Ms. Stanford with a short lead. On the inside, Ebony Ice up on the outside. Here's BC Choo Choo, followed by Stilettos only. Anzac Bay is the trailer. Into the clubhouse turn they go. Ms. Stanford from the inside leads it by a half. On the outside, BC Choo Choo, second by a length and a half. Ebony Ice sits in third. Stilettos only is on the outside of Anzac Bay. Opening quarter, 23 flat as they march down the back stretch. On the outside, BC Choo Choo on the inside, Ms. Stanford. It's two lengths back to Ebony Eyes, who's now picked up the bid in third. Anzac Bay at the rail end, Stilettos only. They've reached the far turn, the half, 47 and one. Ms. Stanford from the rail by a nose. Right there on the outside, BC Choo Choo. Ebony Eyes now moves out three wide, and four wide is Stilettos only, and at the rail with nowhere to go, Anzac Bay as they turn for home. Ms. Stanford, Ebony Eyes far outside, BC Choo Choo, and on the outside, Stilettos only. Ebony Eyes has the lead. Ebony Eyes will win it. BC Choo Choo second, Ms. Stanford third, Stilettos only in Anzac Bay. On the board, down official winner, number two, Ebony Eyes. Number three, BC Choo Choo, second. Four, Ms. Stanford, third. Five, Stilettos only. Fourth, two, three, four, five. The inquiry sign posted. This is a steward's inquiry into the stretch run of the opener. Two, three, four, five with a steward's inquiry.
Please note we have received a rider's claim of foul also. The rider on number one, Amadeo Perez aboard Anzac Bay, has lodged a claim of foul against the rider of number four, Ms. Stanford. Alleged interference in the stretch run. Riders claim a foul, one against four, and a steward's inquiry. In the winner's enclosure, the winner of the opener, number two, Ebony Eyes. Owned by Robin Sheena Maben, trained by Rob Maben, winning rider, Chris Mamdeen. Ebony Eyes, a three-year-old filly by McLean's Music. Out of Alternation, bred in BC by Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds. Please note that riders claim a foul, one against four, is going into the first turn. Stewards inquiry into the stretch. Riders claim a foul, one against four, into the first turn.
Please note that has been corrected. It is into the first turn, one against four, as well as during the stretch drive. Please note, after reviewing the replay, the stewards have now disqualified number four, Ms. Stanford, from third and placed this horse fifth for drifting in through the stretch run, causing interference to number one, Anzac Bay. Here's the head-on shot right there where the four drifted in, causing the one, Anzac Bay, to check sharply. So it's two, three, five, one on the board. Two, three, five, one.
The result is now official. The two three two dollar exacta was thirty three seventy. Two dollar try two three five two forty eight forty. Final running time, 119 and 21, 100. No changes in race two.
Please note we are down to 10 minutes to post time for race two. There will be a brief delay as they are fixing a shoe on the five, Bodega. We do have a brief delay here in the paddock as the five is getting a shoe repair. I think we're all complete now. Successfully has four shoes on. Got to feel the five here in race number two as we do kick off the pick five here. Races two through six. So we look at the one. This is Timeless Shrug. A mare going against the boys. Her best race is Artem on the 16th. But uh, a little better run last time. We'll see if she continues her improving trend. But she will need to improve quite a bit more. I would think. Ten to one on Timeless Shrug. Number two is Ace Deuce. Definitely one of the horses to beat in here. Good runner-up effort. Two starts back at this level behind Patty Dioro. Followed that up with a subpar effort last time. But his best races are going long. He's got 14 lifetime wins. Eight of them are at a mile and a sixteenth. Antonio Reyes returns to the saddle on Ace Deuce, who is the horse to beat. Number three is Vancouver's Hunter. Kamal Santo rides, a couple of good sprint runs in his last two. I think this horse is interesting at a mile and the 16th. His, uh, one of his three wins is at this distance, so I think he'll appreciate the stretch out. Number four is Value Max, looking to give the Mavens the early double. Nice win with Ebony Eyes in race number one with uh, Chris Mam Dean aboard. Going to have Silvino Morales on this one. First time going long. Uncharted territory for Value Max, but he's certainly good enough. He will be the speed of the race. And number five will be Bodega with his shoe re-tacked re on. Fraser Abley rides for Roger Snow and Morris Mo Doyle. I think he's the best horse in here. He, this is an easier race for him. He was fourth in a, in a tougher race with Dawn with the Wind and Lizzie's Girl. This is an easier assignment for Bodega. The one thing he does lack is speed, and that's, that could be what gets him beat if he loses today. I want five, two, and three. Good luck here in race number two. Horses on the track at Hastings, race number two, field of five to go a mile and a sixteenth. Exactor, Triactor, this race kicks off the one dollar pick five, post time, five minutes away. Here's the field number one, Timely Shrug, owned by the Rockfield Farm. The rider, Jose Sanchez. 
Number two is Ace Deuce, owned by Barb Head, the writer, Antonio Reyes. Number three, Vancouver's Hunter, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Harold Barbie. Kamal Santo aboard. Four, Value Max, owned by Robin Sheena Mabin, with Silvino Morales riding. And number five, Bodega, owned by Roger Snow and Morris Doyle. The rider is apprentice, Fraser Abley. Four minutes to post time. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
Under a minute to post time at Hastings. Under a minute. The horses are approaching the starting gate. The horses have reached the starting gate. Out again now for the second at Hastings. Timeless Shrug, the first one up. Next one up is Vancouver's Hunter. Value Max, Gate 4. The veteran campaigner Ace Deuce and Bodega to the outside gate. Five in, they're at the post. There they go. Ace Deuce hustled right off of the early late. Timeless shrugs at the rail. Vancouver's Hunters on the outside. Value Max is three deep into the turn. And Bodega is the early trailer. Rounding the fire turn with Ace Deuce on a short lead. Down on the inside, Timeless Shrug. Value Max continues now three wide. Vancouver's Hunter tucked in at the rail. And Bodega is the early trailer. The opening quarter in 24 and 4. And through the stretch for the first time. And Ace Deuce has a narrow advantage over Timeless Shrug. On the outside is Value Max. Then Vancouver's Hunter, two and a half from the front. And another gap of two and a half to Bodega, the trailer. Into the clubhouse turn they go, and it is Timeless Shrug and Ace Deuce heads apart, the half 49 and three. As they run past the half mile marker, Ace Deuce by a head on the inside, Timeless Shrug, second by a length and a quarter. It's Value Max in third, Vancouver's Hunter, and Bodega, Bodega with about seven lengths to make up, three eighths to run, and Ace Deuce takes the lead now. Ace Deuce by three quarters of a length. 
Timeless Shrug on the inside, Value Max, Vancouver Center, and Bodega yet to get underway. Quarter mile from home, six furlongs, 115 flat, and Ace Deuce now opens up a little by a length and a half. Value Max ridden along in second. Timeless Shrug at the rail, Vancouver's Hunter and Bodega as they turn for home. It's Ace Deuce with the lead, and down the lane they come. Ace Deuce under a hand ride. Timeless Shrug on the far outside is Vancouver's Hunter, but the veteran campaigner Ace Deuce does it again. It'll be Vancouver's Hunter second, Timely Shrug, Value Max, and Bodega. On the board, the unofficial winner, number two, Ace Deuce. Number three, Vancouver's Hunter, second. One, Timely Shrug, third. Four, Value Max was fourth. Into the winner's enclosure, they win a race two. It is number two, Ace Deuce. He's owned and trained by Barb Heads, the winning rider, Antonio Reyes. Ace Deuce is a 12-year-old gelding by Lewis Michael out of Secret Sonnet. Right in California by Milt Polizer. The result is official. The two three exacta was fifty four twenty. Two dollar try was five hundred eighty two dollars and fifty cents. Today's double, the early double, a pair of twos, fifty dollars and twenty cents. Final running time one forty seven and sixty eight one hundreds. No changes in the third. Post time twenty one minutes away.
at 8.04.
right, we're back here in the paddock. Time for race number three here at Hastings. This third race does kick off your early pick three for you pick three players. Run races three, four, and five. We also have Exacta, Triactor, win place show wagering as always. On a field of five, uh, $4,000 claimers. They've all only won one race in their life. Somebody's going to break through that second win today. Congratulations in race number two to the veteran Ace Deuce, 12 year old, showing he's still got game. Just doesn't want to be retired. Still loving the game and still showing some run. And he won race number two today under Antonio Reyes for owner trainer Barbara Heads, who's on a bit of a heater lately. It's as her eighth win in the last three or four, four race days. It's been a good run. All right, here's the one. This is Drill, Baby Drill. Kamal Santo rides for the Win Racing Stables and trainer Larry Grieve. It's first up off the claim. Purchased the horse for five. They're going to run a, her rate back for the, the price they claimed her for. We're going to stretch her out and go long. So uh, this is something new for Drill Baby Drill. She's only sprinted. Her, she has 19 career races. They're all at six or six and a half furlongs. She's going to likely be the pace setter in here. There isn't much. If you look up and down, there's just not much speed in here at all. So look for Drill Baby Drill to try and get the lead. We'll see how far she goes on the front end. Currently sitting at 5-2. to two, She certainly deserves respect in this race. I know she had a tough run last time, but she was hung out wide on a very slow pace. Uh, nothing seemed to go right that day. Prior to that, she'd been first or second in most of her starts this year. Number two will be Little Miss Intaglio. Until she proves she can leave the gate, then she's she's one that has trouble at the starting gate, walks out of there, spots the field a lot of lengths, and then she can't make it up. So hopefully she's on her best behavior today because she will need to be if she's going to have any shot of winning. Brian Boudram Singh gets the riding assignment. Currently sitting at 11 to 1. Not surprising. She's been beating 40 lengths and 16 lengths in her first two runs this year. But obviously, she's better than that, but still, she's got to get out of the gate. That's the whole key with her. Number three will be striking value. Philly's got a good chance today, I think. Distant third to 2B Sunny and Perfect Penny last time, but that was a a slowly run race early. She does own a win at a mile and a sixteenth, and that's a big plus. Anytime you can win at a distance, at least she's shown she can go long. Final time wasn't particularly fast, but her lone win was at, a, at this mile and a sixteenth distance. She will get uh, Antonio Reyes today. As Fraser Abley had a choice between the three and the five, and he ends up on the five horse, so... You know, riders always want to be on the better horse, and obviously they've the connections feel. Fraser and his agent feel that the five is a little better horse than the three in this particular race. Five to two on striking value. Four will be Peace Haven. Second run off the claim. I'm going to try this one. I, I liked her last time. She ran, trailed the field throughout. She was not interested at all. i got to believe she's better than that. Her races in Golden Gate going long are very good, and I think the mile and the 16th distance in the second race here at Hastings, I think you'll see a, a far better Peace Haven today. So I'm going to give the four another shot. She's currently a 9-2. to two. And number five is your horse to beat, definitely the five, Silver Arrow. Good second last time to Dynamiter in a very good heat that went in 147. Uh, Silver Arrow definitely the one to beat in here, but I'm going to try and beat him with the four, Peace Haven. I went four, five, and three. All of our analysts kind of agree like the five horse in here, but I'm going to be the lone that gets off the rails and tries the four horse uh, in here, PC Haven. Four, five, three for me in the third.
the horses on the track at Hastings, race number three. This is the Blake, Castles, and Graydon sponsorship race. It's a field of five to go a mile and a sixteenth. Exactor, Triactor, and pick three wagering. Post time, eight minutes away. Here's the field number one, Drill Baby Drill, owned by Wynn Racing Stables, the rider Kamal Santo. Two, Little Miss Intaglio, owned by Don Denard, Brian Boudram Singh rides. Three, Striking Value, owned by Maureen Byrne, Antonio Reyes in the saddle. Number four, Peace Haven, owned by Peter Milburn, with Curry Powell. And number five, Silver Arrow, owned by the Pocket Aces Racing Stable. The rider's apprentice, Fraser Abley. Seven minutes to post time.
Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. The horses are approaching the starting gate.
Floating in now for the third at Hastings. Little Miss and Taglio comes up. Next one along is Peach Haven. The outside gate, Silver Arrow. Five in, they're at the post. There they go. Peach Haven quick at the break and on the early lead. Drill, baby drill, moves up along the inside. In between them now comes striking value. It's two lengths back to Silver Arrow and two and a half lengths back is Little Miss and Teglio. They're on the turn and from the outside, striking value puts a head in front. Drill, baby drill at the rail. Two lengths back is Peach Haven in third, Silver Arrow fourth and two and a half further back. Little Miss and Teglio. The opening quarter in 24 and two. As they race by us now for the first time, striking value has a short lead. Drill, baby drill. Here comes Peach Haven driving it up on the outside. It's a length and a half back to Silver Arrow, who's got about five lengths to make up. Little Miss and Taglio, the trailer. Into the clubhouse turn they go, the half, 49 and two. As they run past the half mile marker, it's striking value to the back stretch with a narrow lead, just a tight length. Right there is Drill Baby Drill. Peach Haven on the outside, third by two. Then Silver Arrow and Little Miss and Taglio. As they head to the 5 16 marker, it's still striking value with a narrow lead. Drill Baby Drill, Silver Arrow advancing at the rail. Peach Haven on the outside and Little Miss and Taglio. Six furlongs at 115 and two, three sixteenths from home. Striking value, drill baby drill. Silver Arrow now moving out three wide for the drive and down the lane they come. Drill baby drill, striking value. Silver Arrow, grandstand side. Silver Arrow, striking value. Drill baby drill. It will be Silver Arrow to win it. Drill baby drill second. It'll be striking value, Peach Haven and Little Miss and Taglio. On the board, the unofficial winner, number five, Silver Arrow. Number one, Drill Baby Drill, second. Three, striking value, third, four, Peace Haven was fourth, five, one, three, four. Final time on the board, 148, 92, 100s. 148, 92, 100s. Please note there will be a steward's review into the start of race three. Hold all tickets. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of the third, number five, Silver Arrow.
Owned by the Pocket Aces Racing Stable, trained by Steve Henson, assisted by Robbie Henson. The winning rider is Apprentice Fraser Abley. Tonight's third race, the Blake Castles and Graydon Sponsorship Race. Welcome to Blake, Castles, and Graydon. Silver Arrow is a four-year-old filly by Numani out of Archery. Bred in BC by Terry Clyde and Mike Anderson. Please note the stewards review has been completed. There is no change. They have ruled that number two, Little Miss Intaglio, just broke slow. A513, $2 try was $11.60. 51 exactor was $7.40. Once again, the final running time was 148 and 92 one hundredths. On to race four. This is our $20,000 guaranteed pick four. No show wagering, scratch the one. Two crown council, three over. Four Brian's Delight, three over. Post time, 21 minutes away at 8.37.
All right, we're back here in the paddock. Time for race number four here at Hastings. This fourth race does kick off the guaranteed twenty thousand dollar pick four payout pool. Does encompass races four through seven. Also have exact and triacta wagering here. Win place wagering. Only got four horses. So we lose the show. Scratch the one, desired outcome. I don't know, there wasn't any of the four connections in here that were disappointed when they saw that the one desired outcome was Scratch, the six to five morning line favorite. Certainly makes the task at hand a lot easier for the other four horses. Well, back in race three, congratulations to the Pocket Aces Racing Stable. Trainer Steve Henson and rider Fraser Abley is Silver Arrow was pretty confidently ridden by Fraser, uh, just waiting on the rail in behind the speed. When came time, midway on the stretch turn, he angled him off the rail, or her off the rail, and she responded with a good final 3 sixteenths of a mile kick to easily get the money as the 3-5 to five favorite in race number 3. That's Silver Arrow for the Pocket Aces Racing Stable, Fraser Abley, and Steve Henson won race number 3. Here's the 2. This is Crown Council. For Rob and Vicky Gilker, much improved effort last time when dropped into this level. It was a good second behind a newcomer, an army of light who had come in from California. So hooked into a tough one that day. He's got some speed and look for him to be pretty close to the pace going along. This is a mile and a sixteenth. They've all not won a race, and they're all very happy to be here. All, all four of them have been acting up at one point or another. But uh, Crown Council, as I said, much improved effort, checking in at uh, second and 9-1 to one last time. Not going to be 9-1 to one today. He's come back with a good work in 47-3. and three. Karen Kellowan will be back aboard. Definitely one of the horses to beat is the two, Crown Council. It's always a guessing game when you go long for the first time. None of these horses have gone long. Three will be She's Bourbon on Ice. It's a filly taking on the boys. But this isn't a tough ask for her. This race did not come up all that tough. Get in late with Apprentice Fraser Abley. She wasn't disgraced in that uh, maiden allowance race that was won by the highly touted Space who easily won in 116 and 3. That was her comeback race. She'd been off for a couple of months. She's interesting. There's not one that doesn't have a shot in here. I don't want to kind of cop out and just say that they all do have it, but they do all have a chance in here. There's no standout in here, and there's no one you can really throw out. It's just one of those races where... We put together four very competitive horses that are very equal in ability. Two to one right now on She's Bourbon on Ice, and the tote board indicates that. The favorite six to five, the longest shot on the board, seven to two. Number four will be Brian's Delight. It's been an awful horse to load at the gate at times, but I think that seems to be behind him now. We're hoping anyway. Going to remove the blinkers, stretch them out. Hasn't been, he's been off for about six weeks now. Going to try along. But he is faster than anyone. He will get the lead. He was a good second to road closer in his last start, which is his races, his numbers are by far better than anyone in here. Not surprising to see him as the favorite. I liked him over desired outcomes, so no, all, that, all the scratch did was ruin my price. But uh, seven to five with Antonio Reyes on Brian's delight. And number five is Cairo Crusader for the R and H stable. A decent third behind an army of light and Crown Council got a little far out of it last time. He 
He was blinkers off that day and finished a couple links in arrears of Crown Council. Looks like I got a shoe repair on this one. Seven to two on Cairo Crusader. I think the mile and the 16th will help him. Certainly the sprint, he just doesn't have that sprint gear. He's not fast enough to go 22s. And I think the more relaxed fractions of 24, 48, 113, you know, it definitely looks like it might be to his liking. We'll see. He still has to prove it, but he's bred to go long by Cairo Prince out of a salute to Sarge Mayor. Well, there are your four. $25,000 maidens. Three of them in for 32 being BC breads. Once again, scratch the one desired outcome. He, he was the heavy, going to be the heavy favorite today and tough to beat, but he's out. So it's made this four horse field very competitive. We'll see how it all plays out in 10 minutes. Once again, $20,000 pick four guaranteed payout pool starts right now. You got 10 plus minutes. Let's see, you got a little time past 10 minutes. But get them in. Crowd's building tonight. Good crowd. They've been over 100 grand in the last race. Could handle tonight, too, so far. As we look at the five, getting a definitely getting a shoe repair. All right, good luck here in the fourth. Brief delay to post parade of race four as number five, Cairo Crusader, is getting a shoe repair.
The horses on the track at Hastings. Race number four, field of four, scratch the one. No show wagering. This race kicks off the $20,000 guaranteed pick four. There's also exactor and triactor wagering. Post time, five minutes away. On parade, excuse from post parade, the two crown counsel, owned by Robin Vicky Gilker. The rider is Kiran Kelawan. Three, she's Bourbon on Ice. Owned by Harry Holden and Ashley Martin, the rider's apprentice, Fraser Abley. Four, Brian's Delight. Owned by Warren Wilson, Neil Setskowski, June Sutherland, G. Ross Switzer, and Barry Hickman. Antonio Reyes aboard. And number five, Cairo Crusader. Also excused from post parade, owned by the RNH stable, the rider Ridge Val Gobin. Three minutes to post time. All right, time for the pick four here at Hastings, sponsored by TwinSpires.com. I've taken them all in the opener. I'm going to be alive after the first race. Two, three, four, five with one, two, four with two, six, seven with one, four for fourteen dollars. Mike's gone the same way, fourteen forty, but he's gone four, five with one, four, seven with one, two, seven, eight with one, four, five for fourteen forty. That is the pick four. Sponsored by TwinSpires.com here at Hastings Racecourse, $20,000 guaranteed. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
The horses are entering the starting gate. Crown Council goes in without the rider. They'll be reunited inside the gate. Cairo Crusader to the outside. And the last of four as they go in is She's Bourbon on ice. Four in. They're at the post. There they go. Brian's Delight heads right off for the early lead. She's Bourbon on Ice gets away in second. It's Crown Council at the rail in third. And Cairo Crusader is the early trailer. They're on the turn and with the lead, Brian's Delight, Crown Council having to be taken in hand. Then on the outside, she's Bourbon on Ice, the trailer, Cairo Crusader. As they sweep by us now for the first time, the opening quarter, a moderate 25 and three. And on the inside, it is Brian's Delight with the lead by three quarters of a length. Crown Council trying to engage on the outside. Three lengths back now is She's Bourbon on Ice and two and a half to Cairo Crusader. Into the clubhouse turn they go, and Brian's Delight continues to lead it. But now moving up on the outside, here's Crown Council. It's about four lengths back to She's Bourbon on Ice, two and a half to Cairo Crusader. They went through the half in 50 flat. As they head down the back stretch, it's Brian's Delight and Crown Council. They're now noses apart, but they've opened up about seven or eight on She's Bourbon on Ice. Cairo Crusader, still a trailer. Past the 5 sixteenths they go. Six furlongs and 114 and one. Quarter mile from home and on the outside, Crown Council. On the inside, Brian's Delight. It's only five lengths back to She's Bourbon on Ice and two to Cairo Crusader. As they get set to turn for home, they're locked together on the inside, Brian's Delight, on the outside, Crown Council, and down the lane they come. Crown Council, Brian's Delight, they're right together, Brian's Delight, Crown Council. Brian's Delight will win it. Crown Council will be second, she's Bourbon on ice third, Cairo Crusader fourth. On the board, the unofficial winner, number four, Brian's Delight. Two, Crown Council second. Three, She's Bourbon on Ice third. Five, Cairo Crusader fourth.
Please note we have a rider's claim of foul. The rider on number two, Kieran Kellawan, aboard Crown Council, has lodged a claim of foul against the unofficial winner, number four, Brian's Delight, for alleged interference. Away from the gate into the far turn. In the winner's enclosure, unofficial winner, number four, Brian's Delight. Owned by Warren Wilson, Neil Stetskowski, June Sutherland, G. Ross Switzer, and Barry Hickman. Trained by Charlene Miller and ridden by Antonio Reyes. Once again, this is subject to the rider's claim of foul, two against four.
Please note the riders claim a foul disallowed for two, three, and five. Four, two, three, five. The result is official. The 4-2 exacta was $7. 4 2, three, two dollar try, $19.60. Final running time, 146 and 24, 100. In the fifth, scratch the three, scratch the six. Post time, 17 minutes away at 9-10.
Okay, welcome back to the paddock here at Hastings. Time for race number five. Got a field of five. We had a couple of scratches. We were, did have seven of them, but uh, we scratched the three. Carla's honor scratched the six. Philly Fatal. I'll leave with a with, leave us with a field of five. Four thousand dollar claimers. Non three lifetime. They're going to go six and a half furlongs. Kicking off your late pick three. Congratulations to Warren Wilson, Neil Stokowski, June Sutherland, Ross Switzer, Barry Hickman, and more importantly, a very hardworking Charlene Miller as she gets her first win of the season. Had a bunch of horses run good races but haven't been able to break through. Well, Brian's delight, survives the riders, claim a foul, and holds on to the victory at 3-5 to five for Antonio Reyes, getting his second winner of the night. Right here's the one. This is to be sunny. I don't mind her at all. She, I mind you, I always like her. Kind of been a, one of my fan favorites. Uh, nice win when the blinkers were added last time. I know the fractions were favorable for her. This race has come up pretty soft. I think she's going to be tough. I've got her in second, but I can certainly see her winning. Uh, that's the one horse. Uh, to be sunny with Jose Gomez back in the tack. Number two will be Island Living. Shocked everyone. It's 17 to 1 last time, winning by a nose and a non two. She steps up to the non three here. Fraser Abley sticks and uh, probably going to be reasonably close to the pace. Getting some play. It's, you're not getting 17 to 1 today. 7 to 2. Number four will be Visenya. That is my top pick for uh, Stu Carmichael, Mark Clucci, and uh, leading rider Amadeo Perez. The front bandages are on today. On the class drop. Good run two back at the 8,000 level. And running fourth behind Amanda, 9 o'clock Caesar. This is a lot easier test for Visenya. I like her over uh, To Be Sunny, but I think they're both pretty close in ability. Getting a little better price though on To Be Sunny. But 8 to 5 right now on the four horse Visenya. Number 5 will be Proud Cause. This horse ran a better-than-looked race last time. Chased a very fast uh, Kapaloo Candy in her first run in four years. That was for 16000 She's down here for four. She's got a way better shot today. She's the long shot playing here, and she looks great in the paddock. That's the five proud cause. And number seven will be Rosa, Texas. She's got a lot of speed. She's got to learn to harness it. She got caught up in a pretty fast pace duel against the, the boys last time. There's a better look at her. She'll appreciate the scratch of Philly Fatale and Carla's honor. The front end will be a lot easier to get. Really like the four and one. I think f one and four, four, one are your horses here in race number five. I went four, one, seven. Good luck. Bugler John Korsrod brings the track the horses on the track for race number five. It's a field of five, scratch the three, scratch the six. They're gonna go six and one half furlongs. Exactor, triactor, superfecta, and pick three wagering. Post time, eight minutes away. Here's the field, number one, to be sunny, owned by Bruce Unwin, the rider, Jose Gomez. Two is Island Living, owned by Randy Lane and Roy Nelson. Apprentice, Fraser, ably in the saddle. Number four, Visenya, owned by Stuart Carmichael, the rider, Amadeo Perez. Five, Proud Cause, owned by Jean Lavalley, the rider, Curry Powell. And number seven, Rose of Texas, owned by Don Daynard and Mel Snow, Jose Sanchez aboard. Six minutes to post time.
Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. Under a minute to post time at Hastings, less than a minute. The horses have reached the starting gate. Loading in now for the fifth at Hastings. To be sunny to the inside gate. Island Living, gate two. Visenya moves in. Proud cause. 
and Rose of Texas. There they go. Closely bunched by Zenya. Now Rose of Texas drives up on the outside. Down towards the inside is Island Living as they pass by us now for the first time. Rose of Texas now strikes the front, leads it by a length and a half. On the inside is Island Living on the outside by Zenya. Three lengths back is to be Sunny in fourth on her outside proud cause. Into the clubhouse turn they go. The opening quarter comes up in 23 flat. Past the half mile marker they go as they head to the back stretch. Rose of Texas leads it by a length and a half. On the inside, Island Living on the outside is by Zenya. To be sunny is creeping closer in fourth. Four lengths back, proud cause. As they run past the 5 16 marker, the half, 46 and four. And now a quarter mile from home. Rose of Texas being confronted by To Be Sunny on the outside. At the rail, Island Living by Zenya and Proud Cause. Eighth of a mile from home, and Rose of Texas continues to lead it. And down the lane they come. Rose of Texas now breaks away, opens up by three and a half. It's To Be Sunny and Island Living. Rose of Texas all the way wins it by about five. It'll be Island Living second. To be sunny third by Zenya fourth, proud cause fifth. On the board, the unofficial winner, number seven, Rose of Texas. Photo for second. Hold all tickets. In the photo first, second, number two, Island Living, second, one, to be sunny, third, four, by Zenya, fourth, seven, two, one, four, on the board.
Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race five, number seven, Rose of Texas. She's owned by Don Daynard and Mel Snow. Mel Snow trains, assisted by Eric Gutierrez, and the winning rider, Jose Sanchez. Rose of Texas is a four-year-old filly by Texas Wildcatter out of What Are the Odds? Right in BC by Mel and Fran Snow. The result, official, 7-2 exacta was 43.50. 7-2-1, try, 114.40. 20 cent super was $11.35. And to pick three, you need three, a three dollar price. $26.15. Final running time, 117 and 92, 100. There was a claim in that fifth race. Number four, Vizenia, claimed by owner-trainer Greg Benin. Race six, no changes. Post time, 19 minutes away at 9.40.
right, paddock time now for race number six here at Hastings. Got a field of eight fillies and mares here, and for a claimant price of 62.50, they're going to go with six and a half furlongs. Good group we've assembled. There's a lot of competition in here, top to bottom. Going to be a good one in race number six. Well, backtracking to race five, congratulations to Don Daynard and Mel Snow's Rose of Texas. Who wired the field under Jose Sanchez. No doubt about it, winner in 117 and 92 one hundredths. Nice win from Rose of Texas in race number five. Here's the one. This is Icebreaker. Drops in for the 62.50. Probably, probably a little better horse going a mile to 16th, but she can sprint, especially at this level. Look for uh, Camille Santo to have her probably tuck. She's not as fast as some others in here, but she's going to get a good trip on the inside, trying to work her way off the rail. When comes time to pounce and make her move. A couple of third pr place runs and four trips to the post, but those races were in 12-5 and uh, most of them in 12-5 claimers that have been very, very tough. She's in a lot easier tonight. 9-1 to is a really good price on Icebreaker if you happen to land on her. Number two will be Ari Kara, your 2-1 to one favorite right now. Back-to-back -back wins at the 4,000 level. Things are obviously tougher for Ari Kara tonight. And she is up for 62.50, but her speed always makes her dangerous. But there is other speed in here with Don't Pass the Pepper, Anami, uh, Lasting Light on the outside. There are pace horses in here, but she has the inside draw. Definitely her race to win or lose. Ridge Balgobin will be aboard. But be wary. She is up in class. I mean, those were pretty easy opponents she was running against. They're tougher tonight, but at least she's in top form. She's going well. That's the whole key. She's sharp, and any time the mares get sharp, they can string two, three, four wins together in a hurry. So she is one that's going well right now for Rob and Sheena Maven. Number three will be Don't Pass the Pepper. When she's at her best, she'll show speed. I mean, she, last time going along, she, they chose to raid her, and it ended up being a mess in that one. That Silk Stilettos race. That July 2nd event when she lost by to I'm a Daredevil in a, a tough defeat for 62.50 that day after battling the entire way on the head end. She did all the heavy lifting and didn't win. That was unfortunate. Could work in a minute and four-fifths since her last race. Karen Kellowan will ride for Joe and Gloria Russo and trainer Patty Leaney. Four will be Anami. She's sharp this year. She had a couple of wins, hasn't missed the board. Mostly in restricted company, though. This will be a, a tougher assignment for her in an open 62.50 race. Second run off the claim for uh, Nicole Rycroft. Seven to one on Anami. A lot of mares in here that are sharp. They're on their game. It's going to be a good one. Number five is Zeta Marie. Shortens up to six and a half furlongs. Yeah, another one in good form. Good second mind case kitchen going long. That was in a three horse field, but still it was a she was running on well at the end. Six will be Bellaru. No success at the twelve five level. Gonna drop her in for the claiming the, for what she got claimed for for sixty two. Couple of wins earlier this year for four and for sixty-two fifty. She can win. Easier opponents for her. Nine to two, good price on uh, Belarus. Seven is Amanda. Just finished winning a non-three for eight. That was a restricted race. She's getting in against open company. Tough draw for her. 
But once again, another one in form, doing well, hasn't missed the board in her three starts. And number eight will be Lasting Light. This is my top pick. Her run two starts back when running fourth behind Queen of Attitude and Koala and Viva Lavino should beat this field. If she reproduces that race, she's got to win here. Last time out, they kind of raided her in behind a slow pace, and they ended up running strong at the end. Viva Lavino and Wanda Lita went in 16 and 3. This is miles easier for Lasting Light, which is why I'm leaning to her. I think she can overcome her outside gate. She has speed, and uh, she could be the one pressuring Eric Kara early in the race, and I think she might be a little better than Eric Kara in the closing stages. That's kind of the way I see it here in race number six. I went eight, one, and two. Good luck here in this evening's sixth race. You got eight minutes to post. Going to be a good one. It's a good race. Bugler John Corsrod brings the field on the track for race number six. Field of eight, they're going to go six and one half for longs. First half of the late double exactor try and super effect of wagering. Post time in seven minutes. Here's the field number one icebreaker owned by the Win Racing Stables, the rider Kamal Santo. Number two is Harry Kara, owned by Robin Sheena Maben, Ridge Balgobin in the saddle. Three, Don't Pass the Pepper, owned by Joe Russo and Gloria Russo, Kiran Kelawan riding. Four, Anami, owned by Tanya Lipkovitz, the rider Jose Sanchez. Number five, Zeta Marie, owned by Gary Johnson, Pumpkin, and Charlie Stables. The rider's apprentice, Fraser Abley. Six, Bellaru, owned by Jordan Froelich. The rider, Amadeo Perez. Number seven, Amanda, owned by Dr. Brian and Carol Anderson. Silvino Morales rides. And number eight, Lasting Light, owned by Hastings Horsepower and the Menelou Stables. Leary Cicheran aboard. Six minutes to post time. All right, time to go down to the paddock area to make our 50-50 draw. It is in aid of the Greater Vancouver Food Bank. Let's go down to Mike Heads. All right, we got our microphone issues fixed, uh, maybe. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be doing the draw 
for the greater Van from the greater Vancouver Food Bank. It's thirteen hundred and fifty dollars to the winner. Thirteen hundred and fifty dollars to the winner. I got Chantel to make the draw here. We'll be sending the number up to Dan, who probably has a microphone that'll be working. Okay, you, you want to read it? No, yeah, you read it out. 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 Okay, okay. One. Nine. Nine. Four. Four. Eight. Eight. Three. Three. Two. two. One, nine, four, eight, two. Eight, three, two. All right. One, nine, four, eight, three, two. Once again, you got 15 minutes to make your uh, way to the, the blue tent at the winner's circle. 15 minutes or we will be doing another draw. Thanks, Mike. Once again, there's a look at your 50-50 draw ticket number and eight of the Greater Vancouver Food Bank is 194-832. It's worth $1,350. You have 15 minutes to claim your prize at the blue tent outside the winner's enclosure. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
The horses have reached the starting gate. And just a note to our on-track guests that the 50-50 prize has been claimed. All right, again now for the sixth at Hastings. Erie Kira, the first one up. She'll go in without the rider. They'll be reunited inside the gate. Icebreaker to the inside. Zita Marie has been loaded. Anami. Next one up will be Bellaru. Amanda, gate seven. Outside gate will be Lasting Light. Eight in, they're at the post. There they go. Closely bunched from the outside now. Bellaru is trying to skip out of there for the early lead, but Ari Kira drives up the inside. Also right there is Don't Pass the Pepper under the line for the first time. And Ari Kara shows the way. It's Ari Kara with the lead now by a length. Don't Pass the Pepper in second up on the outside. It's Bellaru in third, skimming the rail. Lasting Light's got a good spot. Then racing along in fifth is a Nummy. Two and a half lengths back on the outside is Amanda. At the rail is Icebreaker and the early trailer, Zita Marie. The opening quarter went up in 21 and three. Now as they pass the three eighths marker, it's still Ari Kira with the lead. Lasting light skimming the rail. Moving up on the outside, now there's Bellaru. And down towards the inside, don't pass the pepper. The half went up in 45 and three. Three sixteenths from home. On the outside, Ari Kira. On the inside, lasting light. And making a line of three in the far outside is Bellaru. And down the lane they come. It's Bellaru with a short lead. At the rail, lasting light, Ari Kara. Late run from Icebreaker. But it's Bellaru with the lead. And Bellaru will score. Lasting light, second. Icebreaker rallies up for third. Amanda, fourth. On the board, the unofficial winner, number six, Bellaru. Number eight, Lasting Light, second. Number one, Icebreaker, third. Number seven, Amanda, fourth. Six, eight, one, seven, on the board.
Into the winner's enclosure, they win her for a six, number six, Bellaru. She's owned by Jordan Froelich, trained by Dino Condelinius. Winning rider, Amadeo Perez. Bellaru is a five-year-old mare by successful appeal out of Wild Image. Bred in Kentucky by John T.L. Jones III. The result is official. Six eight exacta was thirty seven dollars. Two dollar try was three hundred ninety one dollars even. Twenty cent super one forty one sixteen. Pick five, you need five of five. He returns three hundred twenty five dollars and forty five cents. Final running time one seventeen and fifty eight one hundredths. There was a claim in that sixth race. Number seven, Amanda goes to the Dreamtime Stable, trainer Greg Benin. In the seventh, number one, I'm all shook up, one pound over. Number two, hoax, is four over. The owner line on number three, no people, please delete, Robert Thacker. Number five, Chi Chi Song, is two over, scratch, the six. Post time for the nightcap, 19 minutes away at 10-10.
Okay, paddock time now for the seventh and final live race on our Friday night program. Don't forget, live racing resumes this Sunday. We're doing it again on Sunday at 2 o'clock, first post, afternoon card on Sunday. Seven more races for you. Well, congratulations to Jordan Froelich, Tino Condolino, Samadio Perez is Bellaru. Captures race number six. Had a tough trip. Didn't matter. She proved best. Bellaru wins race number six. Number one will be I am all shook up. Good second to Kapalu Candy in a tougher conditional race in her first run here at Hastings. Well, this race is the same price. I think this race has come up considerably easier than the last one did. She's in a good spot today. She's the current second choice at 3-1. to one. Amadeo Perez looking to close out the card with a couple of victories. This one owned by the Trinity West Stables. Trained by John Snow. This one's got a good chance, I think. I like her to win it. Second run off the layoff, or not much of a layoff, but second run since uh, arriving here in Vancouver. I think she'll be a better filly tonight. Two will be hoax. She came from Kentucky and uh, at Ellis Park. Only three weeks. That's a long ship from Kentucky. It wasn't hard to see why she could be flat in that race. Chase some pretty fast fractions in a tough allowance race. Going to put the blinkers on. Three weeks between races. I think you will see a better hoax as well in her second start since running in down south. Currently at 9-2. to two, That's the two hoax with Antonio Reyes looking for his third winner tonight. Number three will be no people. First up off the claim for Paul LeMessure. Last couple of works. Wow, 101 and 1 and a 59 and 4. This filly's got some run to her. But she has been running in predominantly lower level conditional races. This is a tough test for her. Four will be licorice. Broker maiden at allowance level. Did it easily in a. It was a tough race, defeating Queens over Jacks and Swangin. Tried a tough allowance race going long. That same race that Hoax was in. Was out there on the head end. Did win that battle. Now she returns to a sprint. She's definitely a major player in here. That's the four licorice with Fraser Abley up. Next up is the five. This is Chi-Chi's song. If anyone comes from off the pace, it could be her. Silvino Morales will ride. I know she was up near the pace in her maiden score, but uh, she'll be off the pace tonight. There is uh, a fair amount of speed in here, I would say. She could be last early, but she might be first late. We'll see. 9-2 to two on Chi-Chi's song. And number 7 is a low bra, another one with a lot of speed. Front end could get a little crowded here. We'll see how it plays out. She was fifth in her last run in a tough race against Koala. This is an easier event for her. Even though it looks like she's stepping up, she's not. This is an easier race for Olobra. But she still must uh, find a way to get the entire six and a half on top. I went one, four, and five. It's kind of the way I see it here in race number seven. Good betting race. Good luck whichever way you go. Enjoy the rest of your Friday night. Look forward to seeing everyone on Sunday on our next live card next, this upcoming Sunday at 2 o'clock. Blair John Corsrod brings the horses on the track for our nightcap seventh and final event. Field of six, scratch the six are going to go six and one half for longs. Exactor, triactor, superfecta, and super high five wagering. Post time in seven minutes. Once again, just a reminder live racing continues here Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon, first race will be 2 p.m. 
as we feature the Corgis on the infield. So the Corgi racing on Sunday, five heats and a final. Here's the field for the seventh. Number one, I'm all shook up. Owned by Trinity West Stables, the rider Amadeo Perez. Two is Hoax. Owned by the Willow Creek Farms and Fabio Chiesa with Antonio Reyes. Three, no people. Owned by Bulldog Brothers Racing and Paul Lemessieur. Ridge Belgobin rides. Four, Licorice. In the colors of the Swift Thoroughbreds. Apprentice Fraser Abley in the Irons. Five, Chi Chi Song, owned by the Forster Stable and Blue Willow Dairy with Silvino Morales. And the seven, Alobra, owned by Gary Johnson, the rider Kamal Santo. Six minutes to post time. Once again, just a reminder, our 50-50 draw was claimed. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
The horses have reached the starting gate. Once again, just a reminder, live racing does continue here on Sunday afternoon. First race will be 2 p.m. It'll be the Dog Days of Summer featuring Corgi Racing. Loading in now for the nightcap. I'm all shook up to the inside gate. Hoax goes in. No people to gate three. Licorice goes in. Chi Chi Song and Alobra. Six in, they're at the post. There they go. From the inside, I'm all shook up. Licorice in between runners. And here's Alobra moving up on the outside and going right on by. Alobra now grabs the lead by two and a half. At the rail, I'm all shook up. Licorice, then Chi Chi's song back to Hoax. No people is the early trailer. Into the clubhouse turn they go. And Alobra shows the way by two and a half. I'm all shook up. Second by a half. Licorice on her outside in third. Chi Chi Song and Hoax race together. And the trailer, no people. The opening quarter up in 22 and one. Three furlongs to run. And Alobra is out there by two and a half. I'm all shook up. And Licorice down on the inside is Hoax. Then Chi Chi Song and no people. As they hit the far turn and a quarter mile to home, the half, 45 and four. And it is still a Lobra with the lead. But now Licorice takes up the chase in second. I'm all shook up in third. No people is rallying up three wide. As they turn for home, a Lobra and Licorice. No people far outside. Chi Chi Song down towards the inside. Deep stretch, a Lobra, Licorice. No people skimming the rail now. Here's Chi Chi Song. There will be a driving finish. No people, Chi Chi Song, Alobra, and Licorice in that picture. The photo sign posted, hold all tickets. In the photo, number three, no people, the unofficial winner. Number five, Chi Chi Song, second. Number seven, Alobra, third. Number four, Licorice, fourth. And completing the super high five, number one, I'm all shook up. Three, five, seven, four, and one. Please hold all tickets. There will be a steward's review into the final turn. Stewards review, hold all tickets.
into the winner's enclosure. Unofficial winner of race seven, number three, no people. Owned by the Bulldog Brothers Racing and Paul Lemessieur. Trained by Paul Lemessieur. Winning rider is Ridge Balgobin. No people is a four-year-old filly by Stay Thirsty out of Montant. Bred in California by Dick Calvin and William Gould. Once again, we do have a stewards review. Hold all tickets. Please note the stewards have now posted the inquiry sign on the board. They are reviewing the stretch turn. Please hold all tickets. Three, five, seven, four, one, unofficial.
Please note after the steward's inquiry that number one, uh, I'm all shook up, who finished fifth, will be placed sixth. For interference, the number two hoax passed or getting close to the quarter pole. So the super high five numbers now will be three, five, seven, four, and two. Super high five, three, five, seven, four, and two. The result is official. Prices will be up momentarily. Three five exacto was one hundred fifty six forty. Try was one thousand seventeen dollars eighty cents. Super high five three five seven four two. Late double six and three was one seventy nine sixty. Super high five at three five seven four two twenty cent price two fifty nine nineteen. Pick three you need three of three two twenty eight seventy. Pick four you need four of four one hundred fourteen dollars eighty eight cents. Final running time one nineteen and twenty two one hundredths. That'll wrap up our Friday card here at Hastings. Don't forget that live racing does continue 
on Sunday afternoon, Corgi Day. First race will be 2 p.m. There is only one Friday Night Live left on our calendar. That's next Friday night. Thank you for watching and wagering on Hastings Racecourse. Drive safely. See you soon. Good night.
There they go. Miss Stanford quick at the break and right on the early lead. Ebony Ice trying to move in. At the rail is Anzac Bay as they pass by us now. It's Ms. Stanford with a short lead. On the inside, Ebony Ice up on the outside. Here's BC Choo Choo, followed by Stilettos only. Anzac Bay is the trailer. Into the clubhouse turn they go. Ms. Stanford from the inside leads it by a half. On the outside, BC Choo Choo, second by a length and a half. Ebony Ice sits in third. Stilettos only is on the outside of Anzac Bay. Opening quarter, 23 flat as they march down the back stretch. On the outside, BC Choo Choo on the inside, Ms. Stanford. It's two lengths back to Ebony Eyes, who's now picked up the bid in third. Anzac Bay at the rail and Stilettos only. They've reached the far turn, the half, 47 and one. Ms. Stanford from the rail by a nose. Right there on the outside, BC Choo Choo. Ebony Eyes now moves out three wide, and four wide is Stilettos only, and at the rail with nowhere to go, Anzac Bay. As they turn for home, Ms. Stanford, Ebony Eyes far outside, BC Choo Choo, and on the outside, Stilettos only. Ebony Eyes has the lead. Ebony Eyes will win it. BC Choo Choo second, Ms. Stanford third, Stilettos only in Anzac Bay. There they go. Ace Deuce hustled right off of the early lead. Timeless shrugs at the rail. Vancouver's Hunters on the outside. Value Max is three deep into the turn. And Bodega is the early trailer. Rounding the far turn with Ace Deuce on a short lead. Down on the inside, Timeless Shrug. Value Max continues now three wide. Vancouver's Hunter tucked in at the rail. And Bodega is the early trailer. The opening quarter in 24 and four and through the stretch for the first time and ace deuce has a narrow advantage over timeless shrug on the outside is value max then vancouver's hunter two and a half from the front and another gap of two and a half to bodega the trailer into the clubhouse turn they go and it is timeless shrug and ace deuce heads apart the half 49 and three as they run past the half mile marker Ace Deuce by a head on the inside. Timeless Shrug, second by a length and a quarter. It's Value Max in third, Vancouver's Hunter, and Bodega. Bodega with about seven lengths to make up, three eighths to run, and Ace Deuce takes the lead now. Ace Deuce by three quarters of a length. Timeless Shrug on the inside, Value Max. Vancouver's Hunter and Bodega yet to get underway. Quarter mile from home, six furlongs, 115 flat, and Ace Deuce now opens up a little by a length and a half. Value Max ridden along in second. Timeless Shrug at the rail. Vancouver's Hunter and Bodega as they turn for home. It's Ace Deuce with the lead. And down the lane they come. Ace Deuce under a hand ride. Timeless Shrug. On the far outside is Vancouver's Hunter. But the veteran campaigner Ace Deuce does it again. It'll be Vancouver's Hunter second, Timely Shrug, Value Max, and Bodega. There they go. 
Peach Haven quick at the break and on the early lead. Drill, baby drill, moves up along the inside. In between them now comes striking value. It's two lengths back to Silver Arrow and two and a half lengths back is Little Miss and Teglio. They're on the turn and from the outside, striking value puts ahead in front. Drill, baby drill at the rail. Two lengths back is Peach Haven in third, Silver Arrow fourth, and two and a half for the back. Little Miss and Teglio. The opening quarter in 24 and two. As they race by us now for the first time, striking value has a short lead. Drill, baby drill. Here comes Peach Haven driving it up on the outside. It's a length and a half back to Silver Arrow, who's got about five lengths to make up. Little Miss and Taglio, the trailer, into the clubhouse turn they go, the half, 49 and two. As they run past the half mile marker, it's striking value to the back stretch with a narrow lead, just a tight length. Right there is Drill Baby Drill. Peach Haven on the outside, third by two. Then Silver Arrow and Little Miss and Taglio. As they head to the five sixteenths marker it's still striking value with a narrow lead drill baby drill silver arrow advancing at the rail peach haven on the outside and little miss and teglio six furlongs and one fifteen and two three sixteenths from home striking value drill baby drill silver arrow now moving out three wide for the drive and down the lane they come drill baby drill striking value silver arrow grandstand side Silver Arrow, striking value, Drill Baby Drill. It will be Silver Arrow to win it. Drill Baby Drill second. It'll be striking value, Pete Haven and Little Miss and Taglio. There they go. Brian's Delight heads right off for the early lead. She's Bourbon on Ice gets away in second. It's Crown Council at the rail in third. And Cairo Crusader is the early trailer. They're on the turn and with the lead, Brian's Delight, Crown Council having to be taken in hand. Then on the outside, she's Bourbon on Ice, the trailer, Cairo Crusader. As they sweep by us now for the first time, the opening quarter, a moderate, 25 and three. And on the inside, it is Brian's Delight with the lead by three quarters of a length. Crown Council, trying to engage on the outside. Three lengths back now is She's Bourbon on Ice and two and a half to Cairo Crusader. Into the clubhouse turn they go, and Brian's Delight continues to lead it, but now moving up on the outside, here's Crown Council. It's about four lengths back to She's Bourbon on Ice, two and a half to Cairo Crusader. They went through the half in 50 flat. As they head down the back stretch, it's Brian's Delight and Crown Council are now noses apart, but they've opened up about seven or eight on She's Bourbon on Ice. Cairo Crusader, still a trailer. Past the 5 sixteenths they go. Six furlongs and one fourteen and one. Quarter mile from home. And on the outside, Crown Council. On the inside, Brian's Delight. It's only five lengths back to She's Bourbon on Ice and two to Cairo Crusader. As they get set to turn for home, they're locked together. On the inside, Brian's Delight. On the outside, Crown Council. And down the lane they come. Crown Council, Brian's Delight. They're right together. Brian's Delight, Crown Council. Brian's Delight will win it. Crown Council will be second. She's Bourbon on Ice third. Cairo Crusader for
There they go. Closely bunched by Zenya. Now Rose of Texas drives up on the outside. Down towards the inside is Island Living as they pass by us now for the first time. Rose of Texas now strikes the front, leads it by a length and a half. On the inside is Island Living on the outside by Zenya. Three lengths back is to be Sunny and fourth on her outside proud cause. Into the clubhouse turn they go. The opening quarter comes up in 23 flat. Past the half mile marker they go as they head to the back stretch. Rose of Texas leads it by a length and a half. On the inside, Island Living on the outside is by Zenya. To be sunny is creeping closer in fourth. Four lengths back, proud cause. As they run past the 5 16 marker, the half, 46 and four. And now a quarter mile from home. Rose of Texas being confronted by To Be Sunny on the outside. At the rail, Island Living by Zenya and Proud Cause. Eighth of a mile from home, and Rose of Texas continues to lead it. And down the lane they come. Rose of Texas now breaks away, opens up by three and a half. It's To Be Sunny and Island Living. Rose of Texas all the way wins it by about five. It'll be Island Living second. To be sunny third by Zenia fourth, proud cause fifth. There they go. Closely bunched from the outside. Now Bellaru is trying to skip out of there for the early lead, but Ari Kira drives up the inside. Also right there is Don't Pass the Pepper under the line for the first time. And Ari Kira shows the way. It's Ari Kira with the lead now by a length. Don't Pass the Pepper in second up on the outside. It's Bellaru in third, skimming the rail. Lasting Light's got a good spot. Then racing along in fifth is a Nummy. Two and a half lengths back on the outside is Amanda. At the rail is Icebreaker and the early trailer, Zita Marie. The opening quarter went up in 21 and three. Now as they pass the three eighths marker, it's still Ari Kira with the lead. Lasting light skimming the rail. Moving up on the outside, now there's Bellaru. And down towards the inside, don't pass the pepper. The half went up in 45 and three. 3 16ths from home. On the outside, Ari Kara. On the inside, lasting light. And making a line of three in the far outside is Bellaru. And down the lane they come. It's Bellaru with a short lead. At the rail, lasting light, Ari Kara. Late run from Icebreaker. But it's Bellaru with the lead. And Bellaru will score. Lasting light, second. Icebreaker rallies up. There they go. From the inside, I'm all shook up. Licorice in between runners. 
and here's Alobra moving up on the outside and going right on by. Alobra now grabs the lead by two and a half. At the rail, I'm all shook up, Licorice, then Chi Chi Song, back to Hoax, No People is the early trailer, into the clubhouse turn they go, and Alobra shows the way by two and a half. I'm all shook up, second by a half, Licorice on her outside in third, Chi Chi Song and Hoax race together, and the trailer, No People. The opening quarter up in 22 and one, three furlongs to run, and Alobra is out there by two and a half, I'm all shook up, and Licorice, down on the inside is Hoax, then Chi Chi's song, and no people. As they hit the far turn in a quarter mile to home, the half, 45 and four. And it is still a Lobra with the lead, but now Licorice takes up the chase in second. I'm all shook up in third. No people is rallying up three wide. As they turn for home, a Lobra and Licorice, no people far outside. Chi Chi's song down towards the inside. Deep stretch, Alobra, Licorice, no people, skimming the rail now. Here's Chi Chi Song, there will be a driving finish. No people, Chi Chi Song, Alobra, and Licorice in that picture.